Hey, buddy. Are you going to help me in the shop today? Yeah? That's awesome. Are we gonna are we gonna get the tri pacer going? Yeah. You gonna help me? No. You sure? It's gonna be fun. Okay. Well, you keep me company. You be a good supervisor. <laughs> Well, welcome. We're going to get started on the uh, tail surfaces today and do the reinforcement struts. And so I'm going to go over a few things before we cut into actually doing the work so that you understand what I'm doing as we go about it. So right away, you got to see that uh, I prepared everything. What I So usually the tail planes are not usually made of a hard balsa. They're usually, you know, the soft kind, the usual stuff that you frame stuff out. So what I notice, uh, particularly on this plane, um, when I was refinishing it, when I pulled all the covering off, is that they had not reinforced the holes. I always try to recommend to people to take this extra step because for the longevity of the model, and since it is a structural part, you really need to reinforce these. So I've drilled out the hole where they're supposed to go and I've put a piece of plastic tubing, a hard plastic tubing, and I've CA'd that in there. And that will provide reinforcement as you bolt or screw, however you want, <laughs> they're, they're small bolts. Uh, when, you, when you compress them, it's not gonna crush the balsa. So by crushing the balsa you, and all of the stress that these are gonna take, you're gonna wear the balsa and it, that, that's, that becomes then the weak point. So um, just to eliminate that, I've prepped all three of the holes with uh, the plastic. Then moving over to the workbench, we've got our existing struts here that I'm gonna, I'm gonna check and see if they're the right length. Uh, just to double check, make sure every, everything is glued square. So they may not be right. But moving on, we're gonna use uh, just these yard marker flags. They're metal. And <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them to about the right length, probably a little bit over. And then we're gonna use electrical ring terminals and we're gonna solder those on. I'm gonna use a, uh, a butane torch for this. Uh, soldering gun might work or soldering iron. I just prefer this because it makes quicker work of it and you get instantaneous heat and the solder tends to flow a lot better. With that, uh, we're going to get started into the work and we're going to make sure that this is going to look right. And there's some other cleanup tips along the way that I'll give you once we get there. I'd take a quick second here and show you the difference in cleanup. So what you're looking at is these ends. These are the electrical ring terminals uh, after I've soldered them and cleaned them up. You can see what they look like before. A lot of the flux comes off and makes this black yucky mess and honestly that will continue to corrode. I've seen that happen and people fail to clean these up. It will continue to corrode and eventually the joint will fail. So it's important that you clean them up. Some people clean up with acetone. Uh, I do that as part of my paint preparation here in a minute, but what I do to clean these, ketchup. 
ketchup and uh, an old toothbrush. Save an old toothbrush comes in handy for cleaning and getting little bits of dirt and stuff out, but the ketchup has enough acidity in it. You just squirt a little dab in your sink and put the ketchup back and you can go to town and clean these. And they clean up really, really well. So uh, yeah, just a little tip along the way. Also wanted to note that I am using solder for metal work. Uh, so make sure that you're using the correct solder. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a lot of hurt. The electrical solder will not work. Uh, if you do get it to work, it's not going to be a good joint. So make sure you're using the appropriate solder. All right. Uh, other than that, I am going to finish cleaning up these other two struts and move on to getting everything painted. Uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of primer on these just to keep the rust out because these will rust and uh, that way we can do our final install. Here we are, all buttoned up, all hardware in place, a little bit of primer on it, and nice hardware that doesn't crush the balsa, even though it's nice and tight and very secure. It's a little bit of flex. We want a little bit of flex, but you know, there's, there's a lot less play in these tail surfaces now. I feel like I can actually take the stabilizer and move the plane around now without it breaking off, which is fantastic. Uh, so next, well, what's next is I've got to do this door, which may require some surgery, but I'll keep you guys updated. So thank you so much guys for stopping by the workshop today. I hope you learned a little bit today and uh, learned a little bit more about doing mechanical soldering and what you can do to make sure it's nice and clean. Don't use too much solder, uh, but in the event that you do, you can always you know, heat it up and brush it away or you can file it away with a metal file. It's pretty easy to do, use plenty of flux, and as I demonstrated, you can easily clean up any of that black residue with just a little bit of ketchup, oddly enough. I picked that up from another modeler on RC Groups, oh geez, years ago, years ago. I don't even remember who it was, but I thought, oh, I'll give this a try, and it's my go-to every time. It doesn't have any noxious fumes, it doesn't make a terrible mess, and you know, you can just do it in your kitchen sink and your wife's not even gonna complain about it. So with that, guys, you know, we're getting real close to the end and I cannot wait to see in the air this flying work of art.